Welcome back and thank you for making us the number one breakfast show in the country. Now let's get into our Kickstarter conversation of the day. Around the world, the economic plight of women has been blamed for holding them back and making it hard for those who are already there to rise through the ranks and break different glass ceilings. Hmm. Money is a problem. Now, even in Uganda, right here, civil society actors say their research points them to the same thing. The increasing use of money in elections is blocking female political actors from rising. Now, joining us for this discussion, we have two activists who are also members of the Forum for Women in Democracy. That's Mr. Julius Chisembo and Ms. Caro Idembe. They join me right now in studio. A very good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Julius. Good morning. So, Julius, let me start with you. First of all, what is happening? What is on the ground? Uh, thank you very much. Good morning, members. Uh, I want to say thank you for watching us. What is happening on the ground is that uh, we are having political activism. And right now we are on a media campaign as women activists to see how many women rise up through the ranks and continue joining upwards. But we are also being curtailed that much of the time uh, in politics, we are commercializing it. And uh, we also know that women lack the potential to own and retain property, incomes, and also to sustain them because of the socialization that we have gone through. They are not allowed. It is either the spouse that will own or it is somebody, a brother or an uncle that will own property for a female. And then commercial uh, politics will require that you invest and inject colossal sums of money to trade off, to buy the vote, to influence the voter to give you the vote. All of this has uh, curtailed the women participation. Many of them that have gone through have also been accused of bribing and they have also been sidelined by unfair competition, being given a very big constituency where they will spend a lot of the money. They have gone borrowing. And remember, borrowing is also limited because they don't have the collaterals. So this one has also brought these women to uh, uh, an end in terms of rising politically. So we are waking up and rising up and saying, no, this must stop. We must practice democracy whereby that I present my credentials, my programs, and then you elect me on that. Mm -hmm. But then the voters are saying, since democracy has collapsed in many parts, how shall we gain after you have gone there? We need ours today, mm -hmm. and you don't have it. Wow, that is, that, that is very, very, very great. Thank you very much, Julius. Now, Ms. Carol Idembe, what is the problem? Why is money a problem? First of all, we have women in Uganda that are very, very wealthy. Are they also being capacitated in this regard because of money? Oh, that's true. Uh, we uh, the last census showed that we are fifty one percent, and our men are forty nine percent. So definitely, the those who are wealthy, the uh, percentage might not be a very big one, but there are some we want to acknowledge that uh, mm -hmm. there have been movements mm -hmm. where also women have a bit of uh, wealth, mm -hmm. but the majority that we are talking on behalf don't have that uh, wealth that uh, we are speaking about. But uh, I want also to say that it is evil to really commercialize elections. Mm -hmm. Because when I was in primary, I, I was told by my primary teacher that uh, by the time you go to parliament, you are able to give out, you give back to the, to the community. And therefore, if you're giving back, you bring in ideas, you bring in uh, development ideas, you bring in uh, motions that are going to empower people. That's why in parliament, we have members of parliament who represent the interest of their, uh, interests of their uh, constituencies. So our people, when you go there, because what does the constitution say? Mm -hmm. It is very emphatic on the roles of the members of parliament. And one of the roles is to pass uh, policies and laws that govern the people of Uganda. The other is to actually monitor and see what mm -hmm. government is doing. And then the other is to actually bring in those individual interests of your constituency. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing it well, surely all of us, we have fallen short of this as mm -hmm. Ugandans. It is not only members of parliament, but even us, the community, the constituency, the citizens, 
have commercialized it. So I think we need to start with us. How have the citizens commercialized politics? By they, asking for money? They demand. They demand that you give me mine. When you go, I'm not bothered. So that's why even the ones who give you the 1,000, the 10,000, the 50,000, when they reach there, they are not bothered about your interests. So uh, this social contract mm -hmm. is actually, we have breached it ourselves because when you come and I give you uh, a kilo of, of salt, mm -hmm. The contract, the social contract has ended there. And that's not what the Constitution says. So I think there is need to go back to society and create awareness, first of all. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other that I'm advocating for is to make it less uh, attractable. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there shouldn't be a lot of attra attra attraction on money. Mm -hmm. Probably if we are paying members of parliament 50 500,000 a month, mm -hmm. it will not be attractive. Mm -hmm. Could we do that? <coughs> so that you reach a point and say, okay, I'll get the 500,000, but I'll represent the interests of the people of Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, we'll not have many people mm -hmm. clamoring to get there. I'll take you on that one, at that point that you said that uh, people are ask demanding from the politicians mm. and a uh, social contract ends after a sugar or a sack of sugar is given mm. to this ele uh, electorate right there. Um, mm. We've seen it before. Uh, politicians bankrolling the electorate during the campaigns. Mm. When they get into office, mm. they disappear yeah. mm. altogether. They never show up. And many were contending that maybe it's because they're trying to recover the mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. spent during campaigns. Mm. So, Julius, yes. is it true that in Uganda, if you don't have 100 million shillings on your account, you can't engage in politics. How true or false is that statement? Thank you very much. It is both true and false. Mm -hmm. uh, false in the sense that depending on the level of uh, participation, mm -hmm. but what is on the ground is that historically, people expect money during elections. That's on the ground in Uganda. And then too, that uh, the financial constraints will force women off the campaign platform because the ground becomes unleveled. That one at the background, you need to have saved some mm, closer sums of money. Because when we go particularly for women, where are their constituencies? Mm -hmm. First of all, they are given a whole district mm. for a member of parliament. And the other directly elected uh, uh, positions, which down there is, con uh, is conceived to be men-dominated um, uh, uh, seats, are only constituencies. How much do you need? For a society where everybody is expecting money from you and you are covering a whole district. Mm -hmm. That's one. It's true that you will need that kind of money. Two, <clears throat> even the lower council, even the lower elections, wherever you go, somebody is asking, like Carol has already said, the social contract would have been that what are you going to do for us when we give you our vote? But that one ends the day you give them that money. Because they are going to say, once you have gone there, we are not in. It is you. And sometimes it has become true. You have just said it, that people either switch off their phones, people will no longer be seen in their constituencies, in their areas of, 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 of election. What does it mean? It means that you will need have, to have a lot of money to go through the competition. Mm -hmm. We are looking at these women. Where do they get the monies from? They are either sponsored by their husbands, they are either sponsored by their relatives or on their own they go borrowing or the little saving they have. But how much money do they have in order for them to compete? Their 100 million is for a few. And even the few ones that have been there, when they go through, there are ever things that are placed ahead of them. For instance, in parliament, you have seen in the, the press, people keep taking that, you know, women go there to, to befriend men, to sleep around. But is it true? Mm -hmm. The social contract is that, she, like she has said, you go to make laws, you come back and tell us about government program, mm -hmm. oversight roles, but they don't do that. They keep around here. And then some people say, since you did not come back, we are now taking you on. If you don't give us, we don't take you. We don't give you a vote. So you need closer sums of money. Do they have the money? They go borrowing. They go selling the little that they have. And when they sell, they are competing with the men that have various sources of money. Either they have been working for a long time or they have been in business for a long time. And if they are in business, my wife is in business, I would like to control what she does because I am the founder. 
the women in our our societies are perceived as people that do not easily take decisions of their own that also impairs their effectiveness in competing we are pulling them down men are pulling them down society is pulling them down on that then when they go to stand then they say this is a man's constituency this is a man's portfolio then they are pulled down now if they have the money that's when they push and dash their little money and then the people say i think we better try this woman mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> also where do they get the savings from they either would have worked and if you work you are expected to contribute at the home so you will not accumulate enough money for politics mm -hmm. at the end of the day you find fewer women going through mm -hmm. those who have gone through are also paying through the nose because they have borrowed the banks are on their neck the private money lenders are saying we want our money the funerals that are there in the constituencies or in the, in mm. the places of where we reside mm. everybody is making it to the member parliament to the area leader and women by the fact that they are mothers mm. always find it very easy to be part of of the solution and in the process they are spending wow this is a very captivating conversation miss carol idembe yes how best can this government create a conducive environment where women in uganda can freely participate in the politics of this country uh one i think uh, we are not short of the laws it's about the enforcement and implementation mm -hmm. so um i think we need the agencies mm -hmm. that are taking on the mantle of enforcing to do their their part because uh, as i'm saying one it's about corruption mm. and uh, corruption takes the two to be entangled both the one who's corrupted and the one who has corrupted so are we being effective in that mm -hmm. because if we i know the f sixth and seventh parliament were very effective uh, mm -hmm. parliament and i think when i was a young person uh, from university at 25 wanted to enter to enter parliament mm -hmm. and I think I should have done it that earlier mm -hmm. uh, but right now I think twice because mm -hmm. the place is polarized it mm -hmm. is polluted and uh, everybody thinks they should be able to take money and you know we are not only talking about those who are going through who have been elected but even those ones who have lost because mm -hmm. you can imagine if you've lost you lose your property, you lose the money, and you lose even the vote. Mm -hmm. And uh, what community is saying, if this time you're there, then they say, oh, you know, uh, let's give another person. So they give an opportunity to another person. So it's not about giving opportunity. Mm -hmm. Let's see, uh, do you have the capacity to represent us? Mm -hmm. Or do you, uh, if there is any problem, then you go back and be able to work around that so that next time when you come back, you have the capacity. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I think it all is not lost. It is about us getting back uh, to the agenda, and I think that's where the issue of national dialogue comes in. Mm -hmm. Let's have a conversation, because that is one of the fault lines of uh, a fallen state mm -hmm. where corruption has taken uh, precedence over even the good, the good things that we have done mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the past years. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to rekind and say, no, enough is enough. Because we are cheating from one another. Mm -hmm. If we are cheating from you, then the other one is cheating. Then it is a, a cycle. A cycle mm -hmm. And I think we need to break it. And it's going to take me and you mm -hmm. to say, let's stop it. For the first time, you go without giving us anything and we'll support you. Mm -hmm. By the way, when, when they reach there, we need to support the women and men mm -hmm. to do their work. Let's look at the status quo mm -hmm. right now. Do mm -hmm. you think women, as we speak right now, are being mm -hmm. well represented in parliament and elsewhere in other sectors? I think right now we are 36 uh, the 36 percent the women that have you know every time when we have more districts so so created mm -hmm. the numbers but we are talking about 50 50 parity mm -hmm. we are not yet there mm -hmm. because if we are 36 if I was in a class and you give mm -hmm. me 36 percent mm -hmm. I will still cry yeah but when I get 50 I know even at university I would have passed a little bit mm -hmm. but I need to improve uh, for me, the issue, as we increase the numbers, we also need to see the quality mm -hmm. of the women who are getting there. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that we have been able to help, because I'm a member of Ackford, yes. uh, where we have built their capacity. Because, one, you need to have res do research on mm -hmm. the issues. Yes. So that when you stand on the floor of parliament, 
people are willing to hear. You have mm -hmm. the statistics, you have the right narrative, mm -hmm. you have the right recommendations. Mm -hmm. Then people are always looking forward to hearing what you're going to present. Mm -hmm. It is not about so, talking. So they'll focus on the policy and not the fact that you're a woman. Yes. Because also. it is about the quality, and then when you speak, people will know that whatever you're presenting is backed up by facts. Mm -hmm. Because what I have also realized in Parliament, there's a lot of rumor mongering. I have had this, I've had this, but have you done research? No facts. Finds, no mm -hmm. facts. So I think we need to improve in that area, both men and women. It is an area that is lacking. It, people are so emotional. It is not about being emotional mm -hmm. here. We are representing a constituency. Mm -hmm. And so we need the facts. Mm -hmm. If there are 10 boreholes that are not there, please put them. Don't say 100, but say there are 10. Mm -hmm. And then how do we go around it? And then when it comes on the budgeting, I, I really feel so bad that the budget doesn't go where the people are. Mm -hmm. If you look at the national budget, it is not going into the service delivery of this country. Mm -hmm. It is going more in the infrastructure, in defense, military. Mm -hmm. in military. And then at the end of the day, when I walk in a hospital, I don't see anything. And honestly, I pay a lot of money as a taxpayer. I need to walk and see the service. So your issue right now is pri government priorities being centered yes. on service yes. delivery. And the issue around the table is about education. Mm -hmm. Are we having quality education? You know, 10 years, 15 years ago, we had even foreigners flocking here mm -hmm. because Uganda had the best quality. But th the corruption, the cheating, the bri you know, all that comes back. We are changing the word. Mm -hmm. It's still co corruption mm -hmm. for a child. There was uh, cheat exams. So but to create for me, a great cool. politician, yes. you need to work on the grassroots, mm -hmm. bring them from the bottom, yes, make sure yes. that the education facilities mm -hmm. are there, the health facilities mm -hmm. are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see your point. So it is all connected because that's where, if you're able to deal with the service delivery of this country, let me tell you, people will keep on voting you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Carol Idembe. Mr. Julius, um, yes. according to Carol, we, where we are right now, it's mm. not that good, but so far so good. 36% doesn't look that bad. But how best can we achieve the 50% mm, gender parity right there? Thank you very much. And uh, we, the members uh, of uh, the women movement or the women organization for Ode, Akiford, uh, uh, Onet, we are trying to see a way how women can come up. 36% is, is good, but it's not where we want to be. Remember, we are about 51%. Mm -hmm. The women are about 51% of the people we are looking up. How can we get there? How can we get there? We ha she has talked about education. Mm -hmm. You have heard in the papers that for a woman to pass at the university, I've read even the papers that she has got to give in her body. If that is true, what kind of person are you producing? Why are you doing that one to a woman? I have not had men being uh, uh, put into sexual relations for marks. Why mm -hmm. women? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to that... On that point of education, I'll just interject a bit. There's something that I don't think is fair. Cut-off points for females at the university are lower than those for the males. We, we call it affirmative action. Affirmative action. But don't you think those are some of the reasons that, you know, we ha tend to see that women are not taken that seriously in this space because people feel like they've been favored from a lower level. Could I answer that? I'll, I'll get to you. I'll get <laughs> to you. Because he was finishing, he was finishing his statement. I, 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 I want to say now yeah. affirmative action yeah. should be gone by now. Mm -hmm. It should be now real merit. What we are looking for is a level ground. Mm -hmm. The women are able to stand up and compete favorably. But you know they are being portrayed negatively. Mm -hmm. They have come up. If you see enrollments right from primary school, women enroll more than men. Mm -hmm. What is happening when they go higher and higher and higher? They are being let down by a few other things. Service delivery had broken down. How do you maintain a girl child in school? They are dropping out because of various reasons. Either the men, the boys are looking at them, mm -hmm. the society is looking at them, they are having issues like for instance Poor uh, menstrual hygiene. Yes, all that they, they don't that. have that. Nobody is well is running up to say, I can provide this. Mm -hmm. Yet you can provide an eight hundred million vehicle mm -hmm. to a uh, presidential advisor. Mm -hmm. How many of those uh, reusable pads mm -hmm. could be supplied to our primary schools? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now the affirmative action it is put there, but I don't think that is helping these women. Mm -hmm. Everybody say, but you have one point five. Yet they are being uh, uh, molested down here. True. They are being uh, uh, isolated. Mm -hmm. And when they come to the field, they will say, after all, this one did not pass, mm -hmm. but she was just helped to pass, mm -hmm. which is not correct. 
we should change that word. And the other solutions? The other solution would be also now to level the ground. That if it is a competition, look at what I offer mm -hmm. and what the other one offers. And three is to rejuvenate the faith in the democratic elections. Can we have democratic elections where what I have said counts on my vote either in favor or against me? They have manifestos, but like I told you, we rarely take into consideration manifestos that are really orchestrated by women. Mm -hmm. And that one puts them at a, at, at, at a, at a, at a bad uh, position. Mm -hmm. Two, we are looking at politics as a job. She has said, can we lower the remuneration mm -hmm. so that people are not encouraged to compete madly like that? The women are willing to do a service. So right now people are competing madly because of money. Yes, they are competing because of money. And the women do not have the chances to make money like the men, like I've told you. So you have asked me what should be done. Mm -hmm. What should be done is now support a girl child in school, support a girl child in whatever project they are doing, be it political, social, or economic, so that they are also, they, you, 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 you really create that, um, that, uh, that relationship between the community, between the voter and the, uh, the, 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 the woman who is standing as an aspirant. Mm -hmm. And then to facilitate these women who are in employment, whether civil or private, so that they are seen to be delivering. You know they always give them tasks that are really, uh, uh, you give with one hand and you remove with one hand. Mm -hmm. You tell somebody do this, but you are also putting a lot of stringent uh, things to do. Thank you are keeping much, them yes. late mm -hmm. in the office. You are keeping them mm -hmm. on the on, 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 on the assignment, but they have families. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Julius. We are wrapping up. Let me just uh, finish up with Miss Kari Dembe. You wanted to p pitch in on the issue of affirmative action I think at for universities. Me, you know, we need Don't you think to, it's, it, we need, uh, we, it's unjust to the males? We need to know the history, the imbalances that mm -hmm. have been there. Uh, it's just recent that Makere has had a graduation of, we, of fem the female graduates being uh, 50 percent mm -hmm. and if it's only one year so if you remove it and then we go back mm -hmm. because it needs to be tested every 10 years mm -hmm. parliament reviews the affirmative action mm -hmm. and uh, we are not yet yet uh, yet there but i know there are particular uh, science oriented uh, courses. So the affirmative we, action is, is, is done have, in good faith. Yes, yes, where we have not even got 50%. Mm -hmm. uh, in engineering, my son is uh, doing engineering in Makerere, but I, I have asked him and he says the girls are few. If you're, there are 70 and there are seven girls, have we reached where we are? No. And I'm sure some of them, if the 1.5 wasn't given, then mm -hmm. they wouldn't have been even. Uh, uh, students of uh, undergraduates of, uh, of, uh, of engineering. So we, we need to look at it mm -hmm. uh, with uh, statistics but also observations and then we need to improve where it's not working well. I know definitely at one point it will be withdrawn. It will be withdrawn. Okay, finally I've, I've had that even women who are in politics, like for, for example the parliament, are being financed by other uh, interest groups like the men. So meaning they might not be able to handle women's issues. Is it true in uh, 30 seconds? Uh, I think for like me... Like if you're a lady running for parliament and it's me a man who is financing you. Uh, that would, one is yeah. the, the negative. But if I'm a, I have my spouse, why doesn't he have to, su to support me? Mm -hmm. Because... Then it won't we are, affect your views Then in we are going to, to define which man. If it is a man who's sponsoring me outside, who wants to, I stand against his competitor, mm -hmm. then I, I don't want to be part of that. Okay, let's leave it at yes. that, Ms. Carol Idembe and mm -hmm. Mr. Julius Gisembo, members of the Forum of Women in Democracy. Mm -hmm. Many thanks for having made the time to speak to us. Thank it's you. been amazing. Thank so you. we do hope that government does put in place... Um, a favorable conducive environment for our women to be able to participate fairly in the politics of this country because if they get into those places of leadership they'll be able to make the big decisions that affect other women and girls in society not only the girls and the women but also the boys right about now